Hello, welcome back. Let's do a quick review of what we have seen across the landscape of languages in regards to basic data types and variables. The obvious thing is that not all languages are equal in the types that they provide nor in how they are used. The other thing is that not all languages allow you to define variables the same way to hold values of the, those types. So let's just take um, Boolean values, for example, and the Boolean data type. We've seen that C does not have a Boolean type. However, C treats a zero value as false, and a non-zero value then as true. If you think about it, if zero is false, then if you do a um, Boolean expression like not zero, well, that's going to give you a um, one. But it also means that uh, for C, since it's using the number zero as false, then any number that's not zero must be true. And that is exactly the case. Now, this ability that to foresee to use any number that is not zero as true has caused some very interesting problems. But I'll get back to that later. And similarly, C++ also treats zero as false and non-zero as true. However, in C++, we saw that they had a bool keyword along with true and false the values as keywords in the language. However, if you were to create a variable of type bool and hover your mouse over it, you see it how it's actually type defined or whatever to some crazy um, generic with traits and all these other things, C++ parlance, to be an int. So it's still treating um, Boolean, even though it's defined in a language, as a um, numeric type. Bytes, on the other hand, when it comes to bytes, we we'll see that bytes as a data type or storage is not supported across all the language either. Um, C, C++, Go, and the JVM language, which is your Java, Groovy, and Scala, they have support for bytes, um, except that Scala we saw did not have the support for lowercase byte as a intrinsic type, a primitive type, let's call it a prim primitive type, not intrinsic, let's call it a primitive type. In Scala, all, everything is an object. So even your integer or float or everything is, gets wrapped in a class. And the same thing happened in Groovy too, is also that Groovy allow you to have the lowercase aliases for bytes, int, and so on, even though it would still wrap it in a class. Whereas in Scala, they didn't even make mince words. They just, you, you're just not allowed to have um, basic types, um, the primitive types um, that are not wrapped as an object. Um, but anyway, you still have byte as a type in Scala and all the other languages. It's only when you get to Python, then you have something that is sort of like supported, but not quite supported in the sense that you can create a character, um, but it's not quite a byte, or you can have a byte array but then each element of that array is still not a byte, it's still a string. So Python is the only language in the set that we're looking at where we can really say that you don't have quite, you don't quite have support for, for a byte. You can have byte arrays, so you can represent something like a large file or binary data, um, like a picture or something, but you don't really have the sense of an individual byte. Um, character, um, the thing that you put on the screen um, in C, a character is generally a byte, but also way back when, C recognized that oh, it couldn't represent every character, especially the ones that couldn't fit in the ASCII table. And so um, it needed to be able to represent character that occupy more than one byte. And so it has the concept of a white character and a whole bunch of functions that came along to work with white character. And But C++ um, also came with support for bytes of different characters, sorry, of different sizes. And so C++ support characters are 8 bits, 16 bits, and 32 bits. Um, Go doesn't call it a character, which is the thing that you can put on the screen, or you can say if I have a string and I want to represent an individual element of that string, that's a character, Go call this a rune. And in Go, a rune is 32 bits. Of course, behind the scene, Go can do funky stuff for UTF encoding of different sizes, but a rune is a 32 bit um, value. Now, uh, Room for all these languages, and of course Java also, you have a character. Um, in Java, the JVM language, a character is 16 bits. Um, in all these languages, you can still sort of treat a character as a number, which means that uh, you can add a numeric value to it and so on, so back and forth. Um, short. When it comes to the short data type, this is something that um, is supported in C, C++, Java, Groovy, and of course Scala. Keeping in mind again, that in Scala, you, it's a class. It's the word short as a class name. And in all the other guys, C, C, plus or Java and Groovy, you can actually use the word short. It's the lowercase, all lowercase. And Scala is a, so in those languages, it's a primitive type and Scala is an object. 
Uh, Go does not have short as a word. But what Go has is when you declare an integer, um, you can just say int and the size that you want. Um, now, you can always just use int alone and just leave it up to the compiler to use whatever size that is on that architecture. But like I said, when we're looking at this, I prefer always to just say int 8, int 16, int 32, or int 64. It's clear what size you intend, how big your values are, and nobody has to guess um, what size it is. And so I think that our Go by far made things super simple um, by making sure that our their intrinsic types are called int 8, int 16, int 32, and blah, blah, blah. You don't have to guess. With C and C++, um, short could be as little as 16 bits or maybe 32 bits. It all depends on the platform. And maybe now things are settling down with most people running 32 bits and 64 bits. But back in the days when people had 8 bit and 16 bit platform and 32 bit, it was a royal mess. And so um, in embedded programming, one of the things that we always did is did exactly what you do in Go, which is you type define all your type, your variable, um, your, 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 you create your own type, def make type defines for int 8, int 16, int 32, and then you int 8, you int 16, you int 32, and you find so that later on in your code, it is clear what size you use. Integers. Um, again, across all the platform, we have support for integer. The only place where we see things change a little is in Python, we, where we have integers, but it's just int alone. It doesn't matter. It's an old number. It doesn't matter. Once it's an old number, it's an int. It doesn't matter the size. So Python doesn't have representation for anything small, small like a short int or a corrector or any other thing. It's just an integer, and that's it. That's all you get. Um, Python 3, you don't even get long. You just get int. Python 2, at least you have this distinction between an integer and a long. Um, but since Python 2 is going to be going away, eventually, I mean, it's 2 versus 3, eventually there's going to be replaced. We can just say that our Python just support one um, type for all number, and that's an int. Now, the disadvantage there, in my opinion, is around efficiency and memory use. Because if you're going to use a value or you have a number of values that you know that's going to be super small, like if you're going to be keeping track of people's age and you know that their age is not going to be, anybody's, nobody's going to be older than 255 years old, so that would have been a perfect place for you to say age is an, a byte or an 8-bit int value if you're doing like in Go. But no, you're stuck with just using an int. And because in Python 3, an int is just an int, um, I don't know what it's doing behind the scenes, but um, it's most likely just going to use 32 bits or 64 bit. And that just seemed like a waste of, to me. Because where you could have used 8 bits, now you have an extra 24 bit at the minimum, potentially much higher, 50 something bits. So, oh well. Um, and then if you have a lot of these values, then you're just wasting space. Um, long, again, like I said, Python 3 doesn't have long. Go doesn't use um, the word long either. Um, again, because Go use int64. So you know exactly what size you're dealing with. Um, C++, Java, Groovy, Scala, they have long as a type, also in addition to integer. When it comes to the floating point numbers, which is the decimal numbers, um, we basically have two types to talk about, which is either float and double. Um, float in C, C++, um, Java, Groovy, Scala, a float is going to be a lower position one and a double is going to be a higher position. In Python, they just simply call it float. Uh, they don't spell out which one you get, but I'm pretty sure you can find it in the docs or specification, whether you're doing 32-bit floats or 64-bit float, but it's just float. I, my assumption is probably they're going to go for the higher position, but maybe it might be platform dependent. So if you program in Python, maybe that's something you should definitely look into and know what they're doing when it's just say float. Um, Go, Go has two floats, float 32 and a float 64. Again, I like the idea in Go because it says, hey, you have a 32-bit floating point number or a 64-bit floating point number. Tells you immediately that oh, one is higher precision than the other. Um, if you look at float and the word float and double without you actually knowing that double is higher precision, how would you know? So how do you know that double is even a floating point number? You don't. Well, I mean, of course, once you know it, you know it. But I think the intent, though, with Go is that when people look at the code, they don't have to even spend another millisecond trying to interpret or you know, convert what, what they're thinking and what they're seeing. Um, it's that once you look at it, you can just tell immediately. There's no extra cycles spent trying to recall where, which one is higher position or any of that sort of thing. It leaves a less confusion. It makes a much clearer code. And even though everybody who's going to look at the code would, should know, you know this, when you come back to code years and you're looking at a ton of code, 
anything that helps you go through that code quickly without having to pause for a fraction of a second is just better. Less fatigue, in my opinion. Um, signedness. Um, this is the idea that when I have something like an integer, a whole value, I can say, a whole number, I can say, you know what? Um, I know that all my numbers are going to run from negative 128, for example, to 27. And I can fit that in 8 bits. They're never going to be less than 128. It's never going to be greater than 127. And so I can put that in a sign 8-bit value because 8 bits is enough to represent that. Or the value I'm representing is going to always going to be 0 to 64,000. I'll be like, oh, that's an unsigned 16-bit value. So I know it's, I don't need more than 16 bits. And I also know that it's never going to be negative because whatever it is I'm measuring distance or something is always going to be zero or positive. Um, something that is zero length long or whatever, you know, up to 60,000 60, or 64,000. And in that case, I know that I can optimize by just using enough bits to represent whatever it is that I'm trying to, um, I'm working with. And so in terms of signness, we saw that in C, C++, and Go. No, this, you know, saying that oh, Java is going to have signed um, numbers in Java 8 and beyond, I guess. But um, Java never had the idea of signed and unsigned. And therefore, that's not in any of the in Groovy or Scala, and then certainly it's not in Python because Python doesn't even do that. Like we said, Python is only int. That's it, right? No sign or unsigned int, just int. So signness, signness again, back to signness before we lose track here, is just something that's in C, C++, and Go really. Um, something that's come into Java or maybe it landed in Java 8 already because Java 8 is off. No, I didn't worry check because it's not that important. Um, but um, like I said, I think... Um, the if you look at the, the languages though right and then you look at it in that spectrum that i mentioned spectrum i mentioned like two videos back where you know you know you have c c plus plus on one extreme and you know like a python on the other extreme that spectrum there really represent how the language should be used um and and they represent, represent speed of execution also if you want something to be really fast and small and efficient we we want to be on the extreme with c and c plus plus and then if you want to be able to develop quickly and uh, make it um, nice and readable, but without um, having to worry about how fast it's going to be, then you can go to the other extreme of Python. And then if you're looking for some performance somewhere in between, well, then that's when you start, you know, dialing it back a little bit or dialing up, depending on which end you start, and end up somewhere in the middle with like something like a Groovy or I would say. Um, I don't think Scala is a very readable language. I think Go is far more readable than Scala. And we're going to see that as we go along. Um, I think Go is even more readable than, than um, Java is. So, in terms of readability and performance, I think Go strikes a really nice balance. And the reason they have to do that, frankly, is because of when it came out. It was able to come out after these other languages, so it sort of learned from them and figure out what not to do and how to make things better. Every language brings to the table something good. Um, whether or not you and I like all the capabilities in it, it brings something good to the table, and our language learn from it and take away and enrich each other, so that's a good thing. And once we keep having new languages, well, guess what? Um, we're going to always have things to compare because no two languages are going to be 100% the same because then it would be the same language if it was 100% the same. All right. Take care. Thanks for your time. Um, see you in the next video. Um, we're going to be talking about how pa um, applications get packaged up um, in different languages. And I know why I want to cover that next instead of continue talking about some other things that I could be talking about, but it makes sense when I do. Um, follow me on Twitter, um, Straversity1. Uh, Instagram is just Traversity. Um, see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.